Minister of Foreign Affairs Geoffrey Oyema has said that Nigeria and its image abroad cannot be judged by the actions of very few criminal elements who give the country a bad name. Oyema said despite the involvement of few Nigerians in the recently uncovered high-profile scams, many more Nigerians were doing good and positive things abroad. It described as unfortunate the perception in the media that bad news made better news than good news. The minister called on the Nigerian media to shine its light on the good deeds of Nigerians abroad. He, however, noted that no country in the world had taken action against Nigeria on the account of the bad deeds of an individual. Joining us now is Elder John Egera, entrepreneur and politician. It's a pleasure to have you once again on the news. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Quickly, how true is the perception in some quarters that the recent arrest of Abbas, popularly known as Hush Poppy, has seriously affected the image of Nigerian youths in America? Uh, positively, negatively, both sides. Uh, I will say that because this is not the first time it's happening. We're having a lot of stories like this, whether the media is aware of it or not. But I think uh, on a very large scale, it's actually a negative thing, but it's not holding anybody back. A lot of Nigerians are doing great. And uh, I work in a secular environment where we have good whites and other nationals. Nobody is doing anything to anybody because of what happened to Rush Poppy. I think it's about him. And Nigerians here are actually uh, still doing very well. But I think. Uh, the media also have a role to play in this game, and the, the government is there because I'll say this because uh, we have uh, issues where we celebrate uh, too much of fake life. People just fake it to make it. So the younger generations who want to take same step because the people who are doing this same thing at the national level, nobody's criticizing them. So I, the media has a role to play. But on a very not sure, nothing is happening. A lot of Nigerians don't even know that Oscopy has been arrested or is here in the U.S. We are all about our numbers. I do think something is happening um, when it comes to Donald Trump um, in that country. Uh, but specifically, um, what's the feeling um, on the recent move by the president to have about 16,000 Nigerian students returned to Nigeria over the online uh, status of their education? They are very frustrating. That came up on Monday morning. Uh, a lot of uh, international students are like, what is going to happen to them right away. But I'll tell you this, it's a frustrating situation. But I think it's one of those moves of Donald Trump's government. Donald Trump is known for signing executive orders, right? And a lot of them have been rejected by the Supreme Court. This might be one of them, okay? Uh, so I, it's not a big deal, because we have a similar situation last 2019. When the ISIS were all over the way trying to import a lot of Africans or immigrants, but uh, we have to look at things at the room. Thank God we are free now. Uh, it was said, of course, but true. It was like one of those. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Um, we're gonna it. While we still have the network acting well, let's uh, ask you this. What should Nigerian Nigerian government uh, precisely take away uh, from this uh, comment by uh, Donald Trump to fix education here and make it more attractive as it's being canvassed for by ASU? Hey, uh, it's something uh, that is overdue. I think Nigeria has taken this thing too lightly. The ask strikes, the ask sector, every year in and out, we keep hearing these strikes and the rest of it. Nobody's really doing anything meaningful. How do you beat it when you have an, uh, the half population of international students in Ghana being Nigerians? That's alarming, right? We have Nigerians traveling to Togo, uh, Sudan, Cameroon for international studies. To study what? To study uh, African religion. Is alarming compared to what we had in the 70s, 80s, when we have this sense of people coming over to Nigeria to come and learn. What has changed? I think the leaders we have have just refused to develop our 
international sector. A lot of them enjoyed it. Scholarships, a lot of facilities in school, but they enjoyed they enjoy it, but they're not making these same provisions. What we have are all of it. So, so I want because to say of time, the because of time, Elder John. Because of time, could you maybe uh, give an instance or two um, in, in about 30 seconds what government should take away uh, to begin to make more effort with uh, the education sector? Uh, leadership in the hospital. I think it's all about leadership. Of course, problems don't just become problems. Problem arises when we have people, government refusing to do the need for. So governments or our leaders should just do the real thing that is called leadership, provide what is essential for these tertiary institutions. And things will fall in place. The facilities, the infrastructures, laboratories, and all the research centers provide these things. This is what ASU is having for year in, year out. So if you see that being a problem, then fix it. But if you're not fixing it, it's a problem. All right, so Elder John Egero. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, our time is never a friend, but thank you for your time and what you did share. All right. All right. Take thank care. You.